got a 1986 Lund Predator. We're doing some work on the engine, but we have reason to suspect that the transom is probably not as good as new as it was in 1986. So we're going to take a look, see if we can take a look at that, maybe pull it out and uh, repair it, put a new new one in. So I, my first thing we're going to do here is we're going to take these end caps off, take a look inside, see what's going on in there. We've ticked that up, took that off one more time once before. Um, take this back plate off in here and I guess we're gonna have to drill out these rivets um, pull out all the screws and see if we can get the wooden transom out of there. So we're taking off both these caps here and this piece of metal here that the engine mounts to and now we're just trying to figure out what to do about these if we pull the, this wood out of here because everything else seems doable but we need a bore scope to look at this and see what happens. I think that the first thing we got to do is take these um, hooks off. We believe they go through the um, wood. We definitely confirmed that the wood's got a problem. So what we did here is we, we pulled this off. We pulled the, the rubber off this inner track which we can put in. We cut, we, we drilled these rivets out. We got a little access space. What we're gonna try to do now is there's foam in there. And we're gonna take this bit, and try to just chop the foam away with a drill, see if we can get access to the, the bolts that are down in there. And then pull these out. That's step one. The tie down came off. It's definitely through the wood. Definitely have to take the bolts off. 9 16 bolts. 9 16 There's a washer on it too. It's a washer. The, uh, you can't see in here, but okay. the, uh, that bit worked really good to get it, chop away the foam. And we just got enough access to get it out of there. You can kind of see the foam. And I don't think we caused any damage. We can probably put all this back together, but you definitely got to get that out. So. Okay, so we got the second one out. Tie down there. Doesn't that, doesn't that big a deal? It went faster than we thought. You have to break some welds under here, which is a little bit of a pain. We just wound up whacking it with a hammer to get these out. There's a weld here and a weld here, so you gotta you gotta hit it with a block of wood, maybe a sledgehammer, break the welds to get this to come loose to get enough room to stick your hand in there. Again, cut out the foam, a lot of foam back there. Easy to well, easy to do with the drill came right out. Actually, it wasn't that bad. It's easier than I would thought. So the next step is pull the transducer wire through. We're gonna have to cut these out, these drain holes for the backsplash. You can get those. Um, we, we do them. We pull all these bolts out, take all these little guys out, pull this off and see what we got. And things like this are gonna be a problem. We have to s cut that off. Okay, so where we're at now is we've gotten all these bolts out. It, it, there's a bolt on the inside, uh, not on the inside, we have to get those out. And now we're just working on taking all the miscellaneous screws out. The uh, transducer's good to go. And then we're gonna start drilling out all the rivets along this rail here to pull this top cap off. And then hopefully the plan is to stick some eye bolts through the wood here and then hoist it off, similar to how the engine was hoisted off the boat. We just got the, we just got the trim off. You see we have a little bit of an issue here. It's a good thing we're working on this. Just a little bit rotten. It might not be a big deal getting this out. We'd probably just rip it all out, but that's the problem. Here's the piece we just got to come out. This is the top cap piece. We drilled out all the rivets and punched them through. These rivets here, for example, we drilled them through. Then we punched them out. Okay, so we're getting the transom out right now. You can see how rotten it is. It's actually pretty good. It's rotten because it's just coming apart. This is actually turned out to be quite a bit easier than we thought. One of the things here, too. These holes have to be taken out. We were able to pull it out, so we just cut this through and take it out. We're using a crowbar to do all this. Yeah, this is rip it apart. What's this? That's how we're doing it. So we definitely need a transit repair. It's actually not as hard as we first thought. The hardest part is getting those corner things out. In some ways, it's good that, like I said, it's completely rot it because it's just coming out piece by piece. Okay so transom's out. Took us about four hours. 
Clean this section out here. Got some marine grade plywood on order. Next step is cut plywood and replace the transom and all the other stuff that we did here. This is a lot easier than I expected with some of the old transom. Lots of old transom. The next step on the process here is uh, the transom is all cleaned out. And I got a three quarter inch sheet of marine grade plywood. I'm going to have to double up to make one and a half inches. Uh, I'm going to cut a template. This cardboard that came with the plywood. This plywood is pretty expensive, about 100 bucks for this stuff. It's supposed to last. It's supposed to be able to be submerged. You know, it looks better than what was in there. It should last another 30 years, but that's the plan. Put this together, put it in back in. Put a piece of cardboard that fits in where the transom is going to go. And what I'm just doing is I'm cutting the, the outside, the outer edge out. I'm going to cut the wood, put it in, then trace out this portion of it, and then cut the wood later on. So I'll just use this to get the, the wood in the transom. The transom gluing up right now. It's just two three quarter inch pieces of plywood. Very flat. Put on a flat surface. I decided to glue them together. There's a lot of ways you could do this. You could just leave them separate probably. I read a lot about it. What type of glue to use. I ultimately wound up just using Type Bond 3, which is a Type 1 waterproof glue. You could go epoxy, you could go all kinds of contact cement maybe, but um, I had this glue and it was it was rated actually the best for a lot of conditions. So it's not going to really be underwater, it's just going to be in a wet environment, so I think that'll work out fine. So let this glue up for a while, then I'm going to cut, cut the transom base, I'll show you that, I'll put it in there trace it out, cut the final pattern and put it in and be, be done with it. So I'll let this glue up for about at least two or three or four hours maybe. Um, it went together really nicely because it's so flat so the glue just kind of sucked together and it's not warped at all. You can see I got it clamped and weighed it down as much as I can. Board is in. I just want to point out something here. It's very very important to leave this center section in place. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to I'm going to trace this out and then cut this to fit. All I did was cut this board to fit in the boat. If you don't leave this hole, very difficult to get this out. This way you can stick a you can stick a crowbar in there and just kind of pry it up with some wood on the other side. It took a lot of trimming. The edges had to be trimmed down as you see here. Um, tried to keep trimming off little pieces it didn't fit right away it took quite a while actually but a little bit of creative creative trimming here on the edges um, but it looks pretty good so next step trace this out and uh, cut it and put it back in so this is the uh, board it's out of the boat you can see I just I, I uh, marked this where I'm going to cut it see all the trimming I was talking about here um, Used a, I used a uh, plane. I also just used a circular saw on the edge. Pretty much an old-fashioned plane and a saw. Took a lot of trimming. Um, anyway, this next step, cut this out. Hopefully it goes in. Okay, so now the uh, I cut it. A little difficult to cut. Use, use this circular saw and a sawzall and a saber saw. Anyway, it's pretty good. I left this little piece on here just to pull it up. I'm going to cut that off when I'm done. Just wedging out of there. Anyway, ready to go. The last thing I decided to do here is I just sealed all the edges of the plywood. Even though it is marine gray plywood, I just used um, Thompson's water seal. Relatively inexpensive, thin, goes in nooks and crannies. I'll let this dry overnight and I'll put it in tomorrow. It's all ready to go. So, you see how close the grain is. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but I just figure, well, this will probably last another 30 years. Maybe I'll add another five out to that. So this is it. It's going to go in now, hopefully. One shot deal.
pretty good. It's starting to rain now. I'm gonna pack this stuff up. Transom's on. A lot of drilling holes and uh, just trim back on. It's a little longer than I expect. It's quite actually took quite a bit of time until I get the holes to line up and everything. I gotta, I gotta put the drain tubes in next and put the engine on, but pretty much back together. Added a thing for the transducer here, a mounting block, so I don't have to cut holes and I'm drill holes anymore. A little 2017 over there. Um, well the next step here is we have to replace the drain plugs. If you remember I cut those when I took this apart. So how this works, this is a one inch by two inch long. There was a one and seven eighths. Don't not get that one for this boat anyway. It's two inches. So I cut the hole through here, which took a little bit of drillmanship anyway. This goes in there, more or less. Well, anyway, it goes in there. And then what you do, I had it in before, anyway, you put this um, flaring tool in there and you clamp it down and hopefully it comes out like it was originally. So the uh, drain tube is in there. I'm going to insert this into this end here. And then put this on here. Uh -huh. going to install the drain plug back here where it was. A little uh, background on how you drill the hole. First what you do is, in this hole here on the other side actually, you draw a couple arcs, good old days of geometry. You find the center of the hole, punch a hole in the center, drill a pilot hole, then I use a one inch one inch spade bit to carefully drill through. <coughs> stuck some, stuck some uh, <coughs> silicone on there. I'm gonna put this through the other side. Okay, it's through. Then what you do is. This press, $20. This goes in the back side. This goes in here. This is kind of fun actually. This on here, this on there. This up. Three quarter inch bolt. And basically, you press this in. Sock wrench on the other side. Okay. Yeah, it's good as new. Done. So that's how that works. Drain plug replacement. Those are aluminum, they're two inches long by one inch in diameter. So I'm in the reconstruction phase here. If you recall, there were some welds that held this to that side of the boat. I had to break those loose. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop rivet in some angle iron, aluminum angle, which actually came out of the boat, so it's going back in the boat, along the edge. Put a couple pop rivets here, which won't be a big deal. And then when I put it together, I'm going to pop rivet this back together, and hopefully it'll all go back the way it should be. Just the ends are back on, so I'll attempt to lift it up and put it back on. That's it, engine's on. And I use a, just a ladder. It's very easy to use. So it's on, put some bolts on, fire it up, done. So everything's back together. Ready for a 
test run of the engine in the driveway. So hopefully next we'll start her up.